Hello guys, um, this is another book review. Um, this one is for Lolita by Vladimir Nabokov, uh, which came out in 1955, I believe. Um, and a bit about Nabok Nabokov right off the bat is he was a Russian-English, I think, uh, author and poet. He started out, I think, mainly doing poetry, I think. And then um, he wrote a lot of Slavic-type literature first, I think. I think there was one called Mary, I think, and uh, his Russian literature was like, I think, Russian language, obviously, and, but he moved at some point, I can't remember exactly when, probably well into adulthood, he moved to England, I think, but I think he also went to, like, America, too, and so there's, like, um, or at least stayed there for a bit, so, um, so he kind of had, he learned English very well, and judging from the interviews I've seen of him, he had a very fluent American accent, or I'm sorry, English accent. Um, he was able to speak very, you know, fluent American, or sorry, English. And yeah, he wrote Lolita in English. So it's very, despite having a very Russian name and coming from that tradition of great Russian novelists like Dostoevsky, um, you know, maybe like Maxine Gorky, Tolstoy, that type of thing, um, he was very uh, uniquely his own as well. So. Yeah, I mean, I guess you'd argue he's kind of started in a, a bit of the magic realism type of area, fantasy, and and then uh, I'd say it's like Lolita's moralistic. I think there's no there's no fantasy going on aside from on the part of like maybe the main character. So yeah, Lolita, uh, book as um, controversial as it is famous and lit as it is literary achievement and. Yeah, it's basically um, set in England, I think, and it's about a, or I'm sorry, America, actually, um, but basically it's about Humbert Humbert, who is a middle-aged man who lives in America, and I think he's boarding there for, like, a poetry teaching job, I think, and he's this very, uh, like, intellectual but uh, half-poetic very learned man. He's a scholar. He's made of letters, I think. He's very, you get off the sense, he's a very astute, perceptible, er erudite man. And he ha he has this very dark side to him. Um, as cliche as that sound, he, basically he's, he falls in love with very young people. This is why it's so contrary. He's very, uh, very, this is why it was so, um, such as a hot topic or, you know, this very of hot debate. Um, because it was, you know, told through the side, the eyes, and it's told from his point of view, much less. So you get the ultimate unreliable narrator. You're like, from the from the get go in the novel, uh, that first sentence, you know, like Lolita, love of my life, you know, like um, I've got it right here, Lolita, light of my life, fire of my loins, my sin, my soul, Lolita, the tip of my tongue, of the tongue taking a trip, three steps down the pallet to the top. At three on the teeth, low li ta. She was low, plain low in the morning, standing four feet ten in one sock. She was Lola in slacks. She was Dolly at school. She was Dolores in the, on the dotted line. But in my arms, she was always Lolita. So, right off the bat, you get this, you know, very playful language, linguistic type of um, going into the kind of linguist thing. Uh, what I found interesting is that people uh, were debating whether or not, uh, you know, did Nabokov write Lolita Russian in his head? Was it originally Russian or was it originally English? But in my mind, it sounds like maybe this is just me, uh, myself being a bit um, like an untrustworthy untrust um, judge, but I think like uh, it's, it does sound very kind of characteristically English in a bit that it's so, that it dances, you know, like the way... There's like a there's a sing song there's a cadence to that you know it's very the prose is very playful, engaging it gets your senses right off the bat, makes you want to be like Ugh, I want to be I want to write like Nabokov, <laughs> and uh, yeah it's like very imaginative too it's like you're it's like right off the bat you're like Humbert Harbert knows how to get you like on his side and that's what kind of is very important later on in the novel um, is that he's, he's very a double-minded person like he presents himself. And he boards with his family, 
And this is when he basically gives a little account of himself right at the bat. Because this is a manifesto. Ooh, I forgot. This actually starts off, when it starts off, it actually, before even... Well, I think that might be the first, very first thing, but I think it's told... It's basically revealed later that uh, the person I'm writing is actually a psychological... Uh, like, somebody evaluating. <laughs> uh, like, I think Humbert Humbert later on. And um, he basically, you know, it's basically him saying that, okay, these are the, you know, what we found of Humbert Humbert's writings, his personal diaries. So that's kind of what you get first. So it's like kind of like two two things deep. Like, you get kind of like a... This panel reminded me of Steppenwolf in a way, where you're like, this is the treaties of the Steppenwolf, this is the treaties of Humbert Humbert. Uh, and then, again, with the name, too, it's like you get like kind of a silly Humbert Humbert, like, <laughs> kind of like, not reductive, but also, um, I forgot exactly what Navka was going for with that name, but, um, but yeah, uh, a man, very refined man, and he tells you that he's just giving his account of He's like, yes, in my youth, or when I was younger, there was, a, there was a different girl that was Lolita before Lolita. And I should also point out that Dolores also means sadness, and it's actually a Spanish figure, I think, of, like, Spanish, um, may, like, maybe uh, this might be even tie into religion, too, I think, but, like, Dolores means sadness or grief, so, um, which is, like, a very apt name for Lolita, because um, her life becomes endless grief. <laughs> um, but, yeah. You get like this idea that right off the bat, Humbert Homer starts talking about like the, all the conquests or um, the first loves he had, and like they are not like kosher at all. Like there were you know people, you know like young girls basically, and he's always had this fixation on them. He was always say that like for the nymphs, I was always one for the nymphettes or something like just you know like the way he words it. It's like oh it's so, and it makes me why this is such brilliant writing. Um, if we can get past kind of the creepiness of it. Um, and again, it's not for everybody, but uh, if you can acquire it and kind of get past that a little bit, um, you can kind of see that he's a bit of a, he's a bit of a, um, like, someone in a lecture put it, uh, Harvard lectures, which are really good. There's a American literature one that's by, I can't remember the name of the teacher, but I think the Yale courses, yeah, that one too. I think they both have brilliant or really great um courses um for free on youtube so you check that out uh, help me out quite a bit um so yeah yeah he, you get the, the sense that uh like they were saying in that course like it's like john milton from Par uh, paradise lost devil like the devil in that while being obviously the devil being the figure of evil of uh necessarily so um the, the very manifestation of it even he also is very beguiling and very um s he seduces you with wit right better to serve in you know better to uh reign in hell than to serve in heaven you know as he said uh, really well known quote and yeah you get that kind of you get that kind of thing with uh humbert humbert where he's um, it's almost like the overarching thing is, is his wit, is his, you know, you know, is his intellect and his, uh, you know, his playful, you know, his, um, intelligence, is that going to save him or is that going to make him any better? And like, the question is, is like, uh, it's, t you know, it obviously not, but you get, you get kind of like that kind of tension, right? Because you're because he's presenting it as if, you know, he's never once throughout the whole entire book, and I don't want to spoil too much, um, I'll use my head this time, but you never once does he hear, do you hear him being obscene about Lolita, saying anything gross, he never, you know, he never says a swear word, he words everything so poetically, but he's so sick, and he's so twisted, this is why Nabokov is so brilliant here, it's because he's crafted this character that's like, he's just... I, I can be your friend. It's like that very, um, yeah, it's like, it's, it's this idea that evil isn't always this, yes, I am a, you know, I am a, like, you know, evil can often be in plain sight. It can often be the, um, it can often be somebody who's very, um, you know, clean, like very clean. And you know. so, yeah, it's like, that's kind of the thing is that, um, so Humbert Hubbard arrives in the U.S. on account of, you know, 
teaching poetry, I think, and instantly kind of wins the the uh, affection or or uh, validation of the uh, main family of and of the lady and her daughter Lolita, um, and basically like right off the bat he's smitten with her obviously and there's right off the bat like you can tell her mother is like kind of like yes like this you know this is my 12 or 13 year old girl and you know she's like <laughs> literally not even a teenager um in fact in the movie this was such controversial uh you know that in the movie see on Kubrick's movie which is a good great movie too uh they had to up her age like 16 because it was so iffy to get somebody um, at that age, you know, to portray that in cinema, so, um, so yeah, it gives you an idea of how controversial it was in this, in, you know, in, again, this was, like, in the 50s, so, yeah, basically, there, you know, uh, it's basically implied that, you know, it's, like, she's kind of, like, the standard, kind of stereotypical teen that's kind of, like, shallow and into, you know, and into this and that and that, and it's a stereotypical thing of seeing her, like, you know, sunbathing, you know, and he's like smitten with her and like right off the bat and um basically you know she's like listening to the radio and like fancying of her boys and stuff and pop culture things and um there's that aspect of him and this is where things get like really weird is that he starts planning basically to ingratiate himself with a family <laughs> so sick um and him to basically kind of win them over so he can get closer to Lolita you know he starts like you know, he's staying, he's boarding with them, and, you know, he's, you know, like, he's teaching her poetry, and she doesn't understand poetry, for example, and he's, like, so, like, right off the bat, it's, like, if anything, that says that she's a child unscathed by life, unscathed by anything, ready, you know, like, this is in, in much less, not ready for somebody, like, as perverted as Humbert, you know, but, you know, you can kind of see the division, it's stark trash, it's, like, middle-aged man, um, has a different history, has a darker past, has, you know, is willing to do anything with this, but, like, for this very prepubescent, just, like, unexperienced, just, you know, just a girl that just wants to live, have a normal childhood, but she never has that. Um, he robs that from her. Um, and I'm pretty sure that's self-evident by the, you know, anybody who knows anybody, anything about the novel, um, so I'm not spoiling it, I hope, but as you go deeper into it okay. <laughs> but as you go deeper into the novel um, he starts doing more and more sicker and more extreme things in order to get lo his love Lolita and he you know fantasizes about her and basically through time like he uh you know starts driving her to different things and then basically he finds out that um Lilia's mom is a widow and you know he basically uh ingratiates himself with her <laughs> to marry her even though he doesn't love her at all and he even admits like, oh, like oh the like i don't i'm not even attracted to her she's just like this you know kind of but this oblivious old woman uh you know like i'll i'll eventually you know I'll be able to have her, you know, I'll use her as a conduit of getting to Lolita. So it's like so sick because it's almost like an Oedipus, not, not an Oedipus type of thing, but it's a very, um, you know, he marries her and then basically, well, you know, he does it, but um, the way he does it is kind of like, well, it's a marriage by, it's almost like a contractual marriage. It's not even, think of it not even, it doesn't, we don't even have to be in love, but I think like she might kind of, have like a bit of a puppy love thing for Humbert Humbert but it's like she clearly doesn't know like what he's on to and kind of oblivious to it and he basically of course doesn't love her so he so said you know made that pretty clear and he's basically just doing it as uh, a scheme so uh, that happens and part way down the novel um, again this might be pretty you know I'm just gonna say spoiler alert okay spoiler alert he basically orchestrates her killing by, um, I think, driving her <laughs> down a, I forget if it was down a cliff, or is it down, like, a, I think in the movie they made it, like, she was, like, driving on ice or something, and he, you know, he basically, like, did something or brakes or something, but it's a little less on the nose, but, 
um, I think on this, I think he literally just like kills her, and I forget like the way he describes it, but like it's it was almost like I missed it because it was like, again he describes everything, uh, you know, in first person like very like you're on his side like no matter what like it had to be done, and finally him and Lolita are free. He's free for her. <laughs> so yeah, it's pretty pretty sick. Um, and throughout this whole entire thing, there's also other characters like there's a. Uh, a man by the name of uh, Claire Quilty, I think, who has a doppelganger, I think, out there, and he's basically uh, trying to. Oops, uh, he's also trying to get Lolita as well, and it's kind of like this thing where it's it's this interesting thing where okay, no wait, Claire Quilty was his doppelganger, I think, right? Was Humbert's? I can't remember exactly, but it was, you know, he was also trying to vie for Lolita as well, you know, try to get her. So, so he goes on this quest across kind of like this road trip and, you know, he basically lies to Lolita, of course, covers up all his murders and says that it was an accident. Your mother died of an accident. <laughs> B.S. But, yeah, he, you know, she obviously believes it, thinks that he's basically a father figure, not <laughs> this love interest. So it's like, it doesn't work. But, um, so yeah, they go on this road trip to kind of evade this quilty guy, and he's and Peter Sellers does a stellar job in in um, the movie because you know, um, and he also repeatedly collaborated with Kubrick as well with um, uh, Doctor Strange Love, where he played like literally like three to four different real, full film roles. It was like does a really great job. He does, his comedic presence doesn't uh, like marginalize or de he doesn't desensitize you from the fact that the movies. Or, you know, it doesn't kill the mood at all. Like, he does, like, a really great job of kind of bridging that gap. Um, so, yeah. You know, he's... Uh, later on, again, more spoilers, at the end, he basically kills Claire Quilty. He, like, shoots him. And finally, it's, like, years later, Lolita's finally, you know, kind of... I forget exactly how it happens. Like, he's basically on the run, or he's being kind of, you know, pursued at this point, obviously. Um, and, yeah, he basically goes back to her house and she's already married has kids I think you know and he's like you know he basically just like breaks down and just completely you know admits everything it's like I you know like I love you it's like, and then you know by the end he's like yeah it's like there, it's she's like so moved beyond it's like different and um yeah um so without me giving too much away um definitely recommend it um like I said, if you can get past that initial type of apprehension, uh, definitely very well written, very, um, you know, the prose is so embellished and so, uh, it's almost like over the top whimsical, but it fits definitely. And yeah, like I, like I, I do find it really interesting, probably the most interesting aspect of all is that he never, you know, describes actually assaulting or, you know, physically assaulting her in brute terms like he's you know like the whole entire time like I think it's like he even describes like basically having you know like being sexually gratified by her without even touching her or without even him touching her per se or something but like it's like but he says it in like such a weird you know it's so you know it's like sick obviously um but he's like also like oh I never tainted her so but in but it's obvious that he did you know in, in ways that aren't immediately obvious so yeah I definitely say if you're thinking it's too obscene I definitely say it's like it's not written that way but if you get the overarching drift of it it definitely is so yeah definitely recommend classic literature um thanks for watching